Okay, for all of you who are uh, just now signing on, this meeting is being recorded because there are a number of people that are not able to make the meeting with us today. And we're going to be talking about the emergency coronavirus relief funds that the government has um, designated that uh, we, uh, you know, can as business owners apply for. And after many discussions with women in all parts of the United States, I've discovered that many have uh, questions, doubts, concerns, um, not clear about whether they can, should, um, or even if they have applied, um, when to check back <coughs> around with the lenders as well as the SBA to find out where their loan status is. So because this topic is near and dear to my heart and um, I've managed to probably have no, no fewer than, you know, probably 30 phone calls with same or similar people and discovered that women are not at the table in the, the same way that men are. And that disturbs me a great deal. We have a lot of uh, good, bold men out there who are champions and supporters. And I'm not quite sure why it is that women are not applying for these disaster loans that the government has made available to them as business owners, but I wanna set the record straight and get things cleared up. And so welcome everyone. The first thing I'd like to do is just, if everybody can just introduce themselves one at a time, and I'll just say a name and you can uh, say your name, your title, the name of your business really quick, and we'll get uh, go, go ahead and get started. So Navlet, I have you in my left corner here. Welcome. Thanks. Go ahead I and introduce am, yourself. I am Navlet Cotter. My business is on Teen Ventures. I have a travel agency and I do some real estate investing. Fantastic. And Rebecca, I have you in my right corner. I'm Rebecca Villarreal and I'm a business consultant with the Northwest Business Training Center. I teach people how to start their own business. Fantastic. And Ronnie. Hi, I'm Ronnie Aiden, and I've got two websites. One's called Worldwide Wisdom Directory, Alternative and Spiritual, um, and uh, a Complete Resource Guide. And I have another one, a nonprofit called um, Evolving Health Education. And we're just starting to do a lot of book clubs online with great authors where you meet the author. So thanks for having me today. I'm so happy to be here, Bettina. Great. I'm glad you're here too. And Tio. Hi, my name is Tio Knapp and I'm outside of Silverdale, Washington. I'm a photographer and currently writing my first book. So um, my website for the photography is tionapp.com and I'm really happy that I was invited. Nice to have you here. And Lauren Archer. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Archer. I am a hypnotherapist, a mindfulness trainer, and a health coach. And um, yeah, I have a private practice in Bothell, Washington, and I'm currently exploring other ways to expand my influence. <laughs> Great. We'll just leave it and, at that. Oh, wonderful. And then Lee Romanoff. Hi, I'm Lee Romanoff, president of Income Activator, the only website platform focused on generating new revenue. And uh, Bettina and I came up with this amazing idea of this Zoom meeting uh, yesterday. And within a half an hour, we had created an email and downloaded our email messaging and sent it out through the Income Activator platform. And, and Rami, how much are you charging per lead for your referrals, for your directory? Well, I don't, actually, I'm not charging for a lead to get on and, and have a listing or an event. There's a charge to do that. Is, okay, is that well, I'll talk to you later then, Ronnie. It sounds okay, interesting. Great. Yeah, okay. there's a lot to, to talk about. Yeah. So, um, and, and Lee says it's the we idea, but really it was her idea because I've been doing these phone calls and Zoom calls with people and individual calls with other people, and I was sharing with her that frustration that women just are not at the table. And why is that? And she's like, we need to have a meeting. <laughs> so when she says we, she, she was her idea. <laughs> Thank you for inviting that. And because I've joined her in the Income Activator platform, I was able to quickly upload the summit um, attendee list to my new email marketing platform that comes with my Income Activator. And within just a matter of seconds, she whipped up a 
nice little message. It was short and sweet and to the point. And look at here, we have people that are in attendance. So, and there are about half a dozen other people who weren't able to make this time who are going to be watching this, um, this video recording. So welcome to everyone, both uh, virtually and, and, and live now in our individual homes. So um, one thing I wanted to share with you is that I was able to contact the SBA uh, this morning to get some clarification as to which of the loans that are available is expiring on June the 30th. And it's actually the PPP, the Pay Pe Paycheck Protection Program loan that expires on the 30th at midnight. Um, that said, the other thing about that is that um, it's likely midnight Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So that means um, nine o'clock our time and also lenders like your own banks that you may be going to, some of them have already stopped accepting loan applications as of last Friday because they simply need time today and tomorrow to process the ones that they have. That said, um, in case you're not familiar, there are other lenders that are available online. And so I was going to um, open up my screen and share with you some of the linkages from the SBA, but just to simply say that I process mine PPP through um, uh, PayPal has a program called loanbuilder.com and I believe uh, Lauren might have used that or she might have used her bank so she can share a little bit about that mm -hmm. process and um, I did attempt to try to apply for the PPP through my bank but they're their back-end system just got me hung up somewhere and nobody called me and I stopped in the bank several times to say, hey, there's a problem with my uh, loan uh, application in the back-end. I can't figure out how to get it to go to the final page. And consequently, I was able to process the loan through loanbuilder.com, uh, which is a uh, PayPal lending institution. And uh, there's Quicken, there's Cabbage with a K, and there's uh, other lenders that are online. And so don't, don't lose hope if your own bank is not lending right now, because more than likely they have stopped um, as of Friday. I'm going to welcome Miko Lawson, who's the Global Women Leader for Professional Women of Color Network, and allow her an opportunity to introduce herself by name. And uh, just uh, welcome, Miko. Thank you for joining us. Hi there. I'm working on my video here, but thanks for having me. I apologize for the delay. No worries. The more the merrier. We need to educate women around us and ourselves about these great opportunities that we know um, the lion's share will go to um, our male counterparts if we're not in line, if we're not at the table. So my goal here is to educate and inform uh, let me disclose to you, I'm not a CPA, I'm no SBA lender, I'm not an expert, I only have mostly questions, I have doubts, concerns um, that all surround the women that are in my life. Um, let me also begin by um, uh, having Lauren share a little bit about the experience that we had together um, when we jumped on calls and we're discussing this and the outcome that resulted from that conversation. And thank you for uh, coming, Lauren. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to apply for anything because I, I didn't think I'd be eligible. And um, actually, let's see, I had submitted an application for EIDL. And the reason I'm here is because I, I want to decide whether to go for that because I'm still not clear if it's one or the other. So I went ahead and uh, was able to get through to my bank after a couple of calls. It was once they reopened. Um, and got on the PPP program, just followed the formula, and you know that took care of what was it—the eight weeks, right? The eight-week period from when I got it to whenever that ends, and I think we're like about ending that. Actually, uh, the government has extended that now. They have. Okay. So um, you have more than eight weeks to to go ahead and uh, use those funds, which for sole proprietors or even you know one person operators that probably that eight weeks was about all that you ended up getting mm -hmm. but it was nominal but it was something yeah. yeah but for those that got more and they were concerned because they did have to hire back some of their employees and they couldn't get the numbers up then it of course became an issue welcome Lori. hi Lori. um just tell us the name of your business and 
and uh, obviously your title. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Lori Segal Whaley, and I am the author of a book, and I'm also a speaker. And I'm really the president. I'm just, it's just me. Yeah, there you go. So some, some women own their own businesses under an LLC, an S Corp, or they're sole proprietors or they're contractors. And so as Lauren mentioned that sometimes you just don't think you qualify. Sometimes you just don't think that it's for you. Um, you may or may not have read enough about it to know whether or not it's you or not. Mm -hmm. And of course, until you see loan documents, um, you may not even want to sign. Mm -hmm. um, but in my book is the readiness, the preparation that it takes to make sure that your books are in order so that you have everything that you can easily grasp, you know, a copy of your driver's license, a copy of your statements, your bank statements, a copy of your Schedule C and, and your entire tax form uh, return if needed. These things at the ready is what allowed me to actually be able to make the applications to the PPP as well as the IDL and um, also qualify for the $1,000 grant that was given up front as an advance. So those things are some of the barriers to entry. So it could be that the, the woman herself has already said, no, I'm not, I'm not who they're talking about. Who, who, what are you talking about? Me? I'm a sole proprietor. I'm a gig worker. Do I qualify for these? Absolutely. Right. Um, can you apply and get turned down? Yes, you can. There are women that are part of this conversation that I've been having that have been turned down for one thing, but it's been accepted for another thing. At the end of the day, everyone and anyone should be talking to one another about this and getting informed as best as possible because there's information available online through um, the official government websites, the SBA website in particular as well. Um, there's information you can go and talk to your lenders at your various banks. You can also talk to um, people that have succeeded and successfully completed applications. And at the very, very least, there have been some women who, um, and men who have applied and they don't qualify. Their business wasn't doing enough business. There wasn't enough, you know, they might have some challenges around their credit ratings. They may have some just issues around not being able to cough up um, adequate information to, to verify their income through their business. All of those things said they may qualify for unemployment. Okay. And so it doesn't really matter what you qualify for. I just want you applying for everything that you could qualify for. Um, obviously, if you qualify for unemployment and you accept a PPP, you have to not take unemployment for the weeks that relate to your PPP because you can't quote unquote double dip, right, to the government right. funds. So there are some rules like that that you need to concern yourself with. Um, and of course, once you accept the terms of your loans, depending on which one you're talking about, the PPP can be converted into a grant, provided you follow all of the rules and involve perhaps your CPA, if you have one, or even higher CPA in the first place, if you don't have one. Have so one. I'm gonna um, let Lauren um, share a little bit more about her process, maybe some of the questions. Obviously, you probably had to follow through and, and pick up the phone at times to find out where you were because you might have got hung up in the time. Hi there, Brenda. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> okay. Got your mask on there. I'm in the post office. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. So um, as... Lauren is talking. I'm going to share, start to share my screen with some valuable content here. So okay. if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind speaking to how many times did you have to call? Who did you have to talk to? The kinds of things that you ended up having to discuss. Yeah. Um, I went through the list of the, um, through, through the S was it SBA. I can't remember which one of the links you sent me found the list of lenders, um, 
found my bank on that list. First time I called, it was um, after all of the loans had been exhausted. So there were no more available. <laughs> Uh, but they were, you know, very kind. They said, you know, check back after such and such a date. Yeah. Uh, so I did. And then it was a very easy online process. I bank with U.S. Bank um, and was able to just do a few steps. And then they've been keeping me up to date on mailings in terms of uh, forgiveness requirements. I've gotten several emails saying mm -hmm. you know, nothing is required at this time. The last one was saying, the rules have been relaxed. It's going to be even easier in terms of your paperwork. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a, an LLC and I basically pay myself and I'm using the funds just purely as payroll uh, for the eight weeks. And it's that simple. My question today though, and, and I'll, you know, see what you think about this, Bettina. I've been applying for um, unemployment and have gotten lots of rigmarole and not, um, you know, eligible so far, but I did receive eligibility through the EIDL up to $16,000. And I get to select, it says, choose your amount, you know, basically right. from zero to 16,000. And I've been sitting here going, you know, I, I don't want to have to pay this money back. And I'm not super clear of the rules. So now I'm, but now that those eight weeks, see, when did I get mine? I, I got it. I'll have to take a look at the dates, but I'm pretty sure that I've, I've used up those eight weeks of, uh, of payroll. So I'm, I'm rethinking, do I go for that, um, you know, up to 16,000 with the EIDL? Right. Well, here's my point of view, and it is just my own point of view. And that is that money is flow and anything that will enhance your flow is going to create revenue streams for you in the future. And although it is a loan, you know, the idol is a loan, it's spaced over um, like a 30 year period of time. And at least in my case, it was a 3.75% interest. The first payment is not due until next year, one year from when it was um, funded. And I will have 30 years in which to pay it. I'll be 92 years old. My payments are under $120 a month. Uh, for 30 years for the amount that I had, which was um, not quite twice as much as yours. And so your payment loan amount is going to be extremely low. The length of time you're going to have is extremely high and the percentage of the, the loan agreement is extremely low and you can pay it off anytime you want. But why would you? Why would you pay off a 3.75% loan if you have a credit card up at 28%, you know, it's like. Yeah. I have like, I, I'm fortunate. I'm very financially yeah. conservative. So the only so debt I good. have is, is, is the mortgage and we just refinanced it two point some odd percent. Right. So we're, right. yeah, I know. So money, we're really lucky. money provides flow. And so my, in my book, I, I accepted 100% of it and I accepted 100% responsibility for it because I can use that money to do some, some things with my business that I've been wanting to do. And the timing is perfect. But, um, and that said, the requirements seem to be less for me doing the SBA idle loan than they were if I had applied even days earlier to an S, a regular traditional SBA. There is, these are also not guaranteed right? So they're SBA guaranteed, but I didn't have to put up a house. I didn't have to put up a CD. I didn't have to put up any capital whatsoever. So the absolute decision for me had to do with the fact that I am completely in a no fault situation. I, you know, it's SBA protected. It's a minimal loan payment. Even on a retirement income, I can afford the $120 loan payment. It's even less than that. And even if it's for 30 years, you know, so it felt like a right fit for me, but you're right. You have to decide what's a right fit for you. And everybody's going to be a little bit different. How we think about money is really what this conversation is about. And I don't want to lose people in all of the lingo. So let me just back up a little bit and talk about the paycheck protection program. That's the one that's closing at midnight tonight. I mean, tomorrow rather. And it's really nine, um, uh, midnight their time, not our time. 
Um, so basically, this is the link, I'll put it in the chat box at some point, that um, has the find a lender. And when you click on find a lender, obviously besides your own bank, you, could, you can just type in your zip code and they will give you whatever types of options there are in your area. And all the major banks, small um, community banks are all part of this. You can see that the list is very, very large. But if you're in a pinch right now, I highly recommend just going to um, like the one that PayPal has set up, which is loanbuilder.com. Um, if they're not accepting, I would just go on down the line and you can check your eligibility. Um, also, knowing what's required helps in advance. So the um, Disaster. Yes, they'll time you out if you don't, I think, yeah. right? You have to go through it in a certain period Right, so of time. you're constantly going to want to save, save. If you're using your lender, they have a save feature. Make sure that you're saving. The other type of loan is this income, or, excuse me, uh, economic injury disaster loan application, which is also completed online. Um, you can pr print it out and complete it, but why bother to do that? That would just slow your process down. This process apparently is going to end in December, uh, but it is, both of them are first come first served. So um, I, as a woman applied in, I believe it was May at some point, I believe got fun. No, I'm sorry. I got late April is when I applied and I got funded in, in May and um, late May for two different loans. And it's for anyone who has a business with no more than 500 employees. So occasionally I get someone who says, I thought this was for people who really needed it. Or I thought this was for people that, you know, were worse off than me. Well, that's a relative question. What does that mean, worse off than you? If you're holding your own, that's great, but the whole point of this money is to get this back into the economy. So if you're the one that can qualify, if you're the one who can make the inroads to fill out these applications, which might take you an hour or two hours of your time, go for it and then hire people that need the work, right? So again, this is the, you have to choose one of these that fits you. And then um, you would also go in here, you have to be able to mark off all of these. You can't be a criminal. You can't owe the government money. You can't be using it for lobbying. And yes, you can be a nonprofit. I know Ronnie has a nonprofit. Um, so when you click all the right boxes, it takes you to the loan application. And this is for the economic injury disaster loan application. I have printed this out in a PDF so that I know what I'm look what they're going to ask me for. I don't have any business partners myself, but if you had a partner, they, you need to describe anybody who has 20% or more ownership in your business and you yourself have to own 50% or more of your business. So there's some notes to self about that. And I'm not gonna keep going because I'd have to fill this all out because you've got these required forms, but you'll have business information, information about each of the owners, um, additional information and when it comes to the PPP, each of the lenders will give you an opportunity to upload information on, your, on yourself to prove your identity, to prove your income, to prove you know, your, that your tax status and upload upwards of three tax returns. Um, I personally only ended up uploading one tax return to the IRS and whatever they needed, they, they were able to use that tax return for anything and everything. And I happen to choose 2019. So rather than waiting till the end of, you know, to middle of July to apply for my 2019 tax return, I went ahead and applied for it early. Uh, first time I've ever done that. And, um, and it worked out to my advantage. So I know sometimes people get caught up in, oh, I'm not, you know, I don't have all of my tax returns here and there. I've got issues. Just do your best. Um, one person said to me that there were some items on the loan application they didn't know the answer. Whereas sometimes when that happens, it's best to put not applicable. Um, and if you're 
you don't complete forms that can kick out your form. So be sure that you put not applicable or I don't understand or something like that so that you can keep going in the process. So um, there's information about the, this is the, the actual application. So if I wanted to know what are the kinds of questions that they're likely to ask so that I have my federal tax EIN number sitting right next to me as opposed to buried in my file cabinet, I have it. I can print this out and look through and make sure that everything I'm gonna need to have on the ready is there so that as I'm making the application online, I'm able to run through it. This did not take me even an hour. It probably took me like maybe 25 minutes because I, I read through this whole document and I figured out what was needed and I had it sitting right next to me. Now it's buried again in my file drawer. Um, there's another form that is the SBA's uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Application that just gives you a little bit more guidance. You can pick up the phone and give them a call. I was caller number 400. It took me 30 minutes to get from caller 400 to caller one. So it, it, even though it says 400, it's not a whole lot of time. And I was doing something else while I was waiting. Oh, hi, Tara. Could you um, email me the paperwork that I'm going to need for a new patient? Um, if everybody can put their mics it's on mute, then um, we need to make sure. What, Katina, what we should do is we'll send out another email through the service we did yesterday to yeah. everybody and Make identify everything, all the different sections. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got an email right to get to get here, correct? Yeah, everybody got an email to get here. So, so we'll just we'll we'll do a summary at the end of this and we'll send out all the links and identify what they're for because it is a little bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So, I want to open up the the lines again just to get everybody's take on what where they're at and um, see if there's any success stories also from others that might have already uh, achieved the oh welcome gail i'm just seeing you now um the application you know where are you at um let me start with rebecca we were talking this morning a little bit too i have not applied for any of the loans um mainly because i figured you know i'm doing okay i really don't need any money and i don't really have a salary per se because i'm an llc I just take whatever's, whatever money's available. So I really don't have a salary. So when I was looking at the PPP, I was thinking, well, I don't really have payroll per se. So how would that apply to me? So can you answer me that? Well, yeah. And so as an LLC, you're taking something out of the company, whether you know it or not, or you have a way of tracking it or not. So every dime that comes into your LLC goes through your LLC. And then at some point you write yourself a check, right? At some right. point you move the money over from one checking account to another. That's your payroll, whatever you're paying yourself. And that's what they base your income as whatever you're paying yourself. So I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, um, she only allows 2000 out of her payroll for herself every month, right? No matter how much the company makes. So her payroll protection loan was established based on that 2000. Unfortunately, it was based on that 2000 a month, right? Instead of the 100,000 or 120,000 that she could have taken out of her company every year. So if it had been based on that 120,000, she could have gotten a lot more from a pay, pay, uh, payroll protection program, but she can only establish her income as 2000. So if you're taking all of like all the money that comes through your LLC goes to you at some point, that's your payroll. You're paying yourself the entire payroll. You're not leaving anything in the company's coffers, so to speak. I think so, the only thing I leave in, in my uh, business account is what I pay for um, my, uh, my cell phone, pretty much it. Oh, my cell phone and my internet. So that's yeah. what I pay through my business. Right. right. So the assumption is that there's an impact on your income and it may not be the impact that you presume it to be 
because you continue to pull money in from your LLC as you're getting paid. But your economic impact, the, the, in, maybe you had some deals in the works, like right at the time of COVID hit, for me, I was one of my um, bigger clients fell off. And so that established a loss that I was not able to go out there and quickly return because I simply couldn't market my business, right? So I had those losses. And, um, and during that time, you know, because I was not applying for the loan in the very first weeks, I waited as well. Um, I could also potentially have a qualified for unemployment. So at the same time that you're presuming you may not have had an impact, you may still qualify for the grants and the loans. And so, you know, I don't know, Lauren, did you get the thousand dollar also? The thousand dollar grant? That's based on your employees, number of employees. I did. Yeah. Okay. So Gail I got I, I, I got the $1,200 stimulus check. And yes, know, and that, that was just being a U.S. citizen. Right. Right. So if you add, you start to add this up, you know, $1,200 stimulus, a $1,000 grant for per business employee of your company, even if you're a sole proprietor, you know, plus any borrowing, then what are you going to do with that money? It's meant to be used. You either pay yourself, and when you pay yourself, you go buy groceries, you pay your rent, you pay your car payment, you keep somebody else in business. So this money is, this is the whole goal of this money is to get it back into the stream of our society. So if you qualify, you have a good enough credit history, you have your, filed your tax returns, you have bank statements, you have proof of income, in my view, go get the money because there are other people who don't qualify and they do not have the ability to get that money. Go get the money. That's my, that's what I'm going to tell everybody. Go get the money. And especially if you're a woman right now, there's a huge disparity between the wage gap between a man's dollar and a woman's dollar. And if you're a woman of color, it's even worse, right? Well, guess what's going to happen with this money in the lending world? Women are not getting to the table. So we have, we have something we've told ourselves that has prevented us from making the applications. My goal today is to inspire as many of you as possible to go and make the application. And if you miss this window for the PPP, you know, be ready because this door has been closed already before and it's reopened and then it's closing again, it probably will also reopen. So just get yourself ready. Go through whatever paperwork hassles you have to, go through whatever tax filing you have to, do whatever you can to be ready and able and willing to accept responsibilities to going forth because this, we're, our society is depending on us. We are the ones who are going to put America back to work again. Women in particular have way more businesses that they're starting and founding in our country. We've got to do our part. We're in a war against, in, you know, a virus. And we don't even know how long this is going to last. So let's do our part. Um, I know Ronnie has a business that is, um, she's got for-profit business, but she also has a nonprofit. And her nonprofit may, may qualify. It may be worth the exercise for you to make the application. I don't know the status of the nonprofit, but maybe others of you have nonprofits as well. Ronnie? Um, I'm hoping that it will. I don't know why it wouldn't. I don't know why it wouldn't qualify. There's nothing that I can think of. So uh, originally, and I know you talked to me before, and I was, I was more thinking about my nonprofit and not the for-profit thinking that it couldn't qualify. Now I'm, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what we're doing right now, the direction we're moving in, makes sense not for everybody that's involved. Right. And I know some people thought, well, I'm, I'm okay right now, but let's just say the door never opens again, and then you're not okay six months from now, right? You are going to kick yourself silly for not having applied for this money right now when it's available. It's just a form or two or three 
It's just an application. It does require some organization, but you can do it. You can do it. I know you can do it. Um, we lost scale, I think, and Lee might have lost Lee too. So um, to you and um, Lori, where are the two of you at? Maybe start with to you. Yeah, um, thanks. I have a question. I've never even really considered this because I'm new to forming my own company and I've been always working with a direct sales company and I noticed that, you know, how do you, I mean, would I even qualify for the PPP? Well, I'm a sole proprietor and I've always been a sole proprietor since I started my business in 1993. And so um, people that work for Uber, people that have gig gigs that they're doing, there are other forms of business ownership that qualify. And so, you know, as long as you've kept track of your income, that you've filed your taxes, that you're, um, you've got some documentation through your checking account statements, as well as filing, like here we have B&O tax. Um, you've got to be able to verify that you had income because the payroll protection is to, is to protect that payroll. Well, that, that's one of my questions. I'm on a pension, okay? The and pensions don't factor in. They don't consider they don't pensions. Factor in, nope. And vi also vice versa. So when you qualify for a loan um, and or you get any of the grant monies, those also do not affect your social security income, for example. So that's also really good news. But the interesting thing is that I'm not actually social security. I'm on a civil service retirement. Mm -hmm. And do they consider that as a means of repaying the loan? No. Okay. It has to come from your business. Again, as a sole proprietor, you know, you have to establish an income and expenses and have filed taxes and kept some, some records. But, yeah. and lenders also look at a secondary way of paying. So that would be indeed a secondary way of paying your loan if your business didn't couldn't make the payment. So yeah, it would actually, they would actually look at that too. Yeah, they could look at that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you will email us the link for the PPP? Yes. Okay, yeah. perfect, thank you. Yeah, I had, I had to show, um, luckily I did file my taxes um, by April 15th. I'm just one of those people I like to do it because it just gets harder for me the more I wait. Um, so I took uh, the way the way they could do it. Uh, I took a, you could either take a year from the middle of April of 2019 to the to the middle of April of 2020 if you had records for all, all of that or just, you know, do, do all of 2019, right? And so I just did that. And then, um, uh, that they did, you know, divide that by 12 of what your business income was mm -hmm. and then times it. So you get a, a monthly average and then times it by 2.5. And then that's what the loan amount is that you get. What's so the 2.5? That's it for the two months. Uh, and so basically, so oh, what okay. I got was two, it was two months to pay myself you know, and then they said uh, up to 25% of that could go for mortgage, et cetera. So basically I, I was doing a gig um, and lost my contract uh, because the company that I was working for had to say, hey, we're, we're temporarily shutting our doors. You know, I still have my private practice, but nobody was wanting to go anywhere. So um, it made sense. So that kind of helped me float through two months where I, I basically had my, my stream of income taken away. Um, yeah. And I wasn't going to go for the EIDL, but I'm thinking about it now because um, doors are still closing. My last client on Friday canceled because he just got news that he was exposed. And, you know, so it's this, it's starting to ripple again. Yeah. And we don't know when it's going to we don't know really the long-term effects of this. And so we might as well stay in the game as long as we possibly can. And I did do my taxes on time. I had my accountant do everything. So I've got my um, 2018 return. Did you file a Schedule C for your business? 
I believe so. He did then it. There, then there you go. You got it. Yeah. I also have um, international accounts and stuff going on. So what happened was I, I just sent it all to my account. I'm not even sure, but I have it all documented. So it looks like I have to do the, some paperwork tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And um, Lee jumped off of the call, but um, she and I are working together on building uh, the Women's Empowerment Marketplace um, directory. And so if anyone wants to stay on, I can answer questions about the Women's Empowerment uh, Marketplace directory. I know Rebecca, Lauren, Lori, are, and T U are all part of it um, and by uh, membership and then I've rolled in um, Nico Lawson and several others Ronnie probably doesn't have enough details about it at the moment Gail who was also on this call is a member of the women's empowerment marketplace and together you know we're gonna rise the tide into our order to lift all the boats up because together we can be so much more stronger and looking forward to um, giving out more details so um, are there any other questions? Um, thinking about people who might not be in the room, um, are, let me just go around the um, questions you might have yourself or you think others might have or statements others have made to you are also any one of those three. Rebecca. I had a question about, okay, you said you apply for both the PPP and the uh, EIDL loans? Yes. How did that, did that impact each other? They, they do somewhat, you have to follow the rules. Um, the PPP, if you used it to protect your income, you can't use the idle to protect your income for the same period of time. Okay. Now that PPP time has been extended. And so you kind of have to keep up with the government on some level to know whether you're not, but your lender is also like Lauren mentioned, they're informing us every step of the way. And one thing I saw today earlier was that some people are taking a portion of their IDLE or their PPP funds to hire a CPA to actually work with in the beginning so that they get it right in the first place. So that seems like a reasonable um, option for folks that don't have CPAs in place. Okay, thank you. And thanks for your comment too earlier about the, the lending because Rebecca is a really great resource for us. Maybe you can just share real quick also what you do um, in your line of work because um, you're helping people run and start their small businesses. Yeah, I do that. And I also, I, my background also includes being a lender for small businesses. So I know what it takes to uh, apply for a loan and I've helped people put together their loan packages, which is very daunting when you really think about it, it really is. And I really feel for people who do have those issues yeah. and I can walk people through all that really easily. And well, I've been I have to say too. the SBA coronavirus application was a piece of cake. Nice. A piece of cake in comparison to having loan docs at a bank from prior right. lending that I've done. Oh my gosh. It was mm -hmm. online it was a piece of cake. You just upload all the right forms. You have, you know, you have a place to put things and there was not the drama or trauma that I've experienced with the prior lending in the years past where you have to have your business plan laid out yep. and you have to justify all of your costs and where you're going to spend these limited dollars yep. you're borrowing and you have to guarantee it with your house or something else. It was Completely not that. It was a Yeah, that's that's the nice thing about this is that you don't have to use collateral at all. Right. I yeah, like that I idea. Change the um the credit rating criteria as well. So the credit rating points were much lower than um in the prior years of or I should say cuz SBA is also still doing traditional SBA lending. Um, which that's actually one of my next steps. I'm going to go for a traditional SBA loan as well. And um, that'll be the daunting version, I'm sure. It is. Keep in mind also, SBA loans, rather than just a regular bank loan, uh, they 
the uh, interest rate is a little bit higher. You, it's not lower. It is always it's higher. Right. Yeah. So if you can qualify for a plain old bank loan, go for that and not an SBA. Yeah. And for those that are not watching, if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to borrow at all, just go ahead and apply. Nothing is going to happen unless you sign a loan document. Read through the loan document. If the loan document sounds like a reasonable plan for you, like it did for me, then sign the loan documents and continue the process. If you've decided at some point in the journey that you'd rather not, then you just abandon the whole thing and nothing happens. Nothing. You won't get a single dime unless you, fought, unless you sign the papers. And it's all electronic signatures too, so that, that's also a piece of cake. So, Bettina, is your um, women's marketplace something that I should stay on now and listen to and find out more about? I think so. And um, if the other ladies wouldn't mind staying on just for a little bit, too, um, only because they've just joined and they can share with you why they've joined. Um, the Women's Empowerment Marketplace was a dream of mine since the 90s. And I investigated a lot of different platforms from which to launch, and I attempted several launches over the years to bring the women in my life together and to have them be able to see one another in a directory that's electronic and digital. And I've tried everything under the sun. I, when I first started Women's Empowerment and Women in Small Biz shows and events years ago, um, I tried Yahoo groups and e-groups, I tried, this was when the internet was relatively new and those were eventually abandoned by, by Yahoo. And um, I tried templative websites where you had like a minimal web presence, nothing too fancy, just basically name, rank, and serial number. And finally, with the help of Lee Romanoff um, and really investigating this opportunity for the last two and a half years, I've discovered a platform that will allow every one of the business owners to be a part of the directory, as well as to be able to engage in what, with one another. And um, one of the best parts of it is that it has built into the, each of the pages that would be a website, uh, your website. It has income generating software so that when you have a, a relationship with another member uh, or even someone who's not a member of the directory of the empowerment direct directory but she might be a she or he might be a member of your directory that you're able to um, create affiliations where you get paid to refer business and so a lot of the referral business that i've done over the years has been informal and it's worked out, but there could have been a lot more formal and a lot more that has happened. And so this gives me that one place. So the Income Activator website is similar to joining and having your web hosted by say WordPress or um, Wix.com, but a thousand times better, right? So you have a place where you can host your web pages but also it gives you a place to generate income. And uh, Lee has at least 10 revenue generating um, applications that you can use that um, help you on the back end. Um, it also comes with email marketing. So I don't have to pay for a separate email marketing service like Constant Contact or email chimp, uh, MailChimp rather. I can actually just use the software that's on, on there. And that's music to my ears because it's, it's easy. And, uh, and also the software itself is easy. I haven't migrated all of my web presence to Income Activator in separate pages, but I've been able to monetize my entire operation in just a matter of months. And now I'm making money every day. <laughs> which was not the case. The day before I started, there was nothing that was being generated that had to do with the women's empowerment marketplace. Now 
there's income generation every single day. There's something going on. And even on the weekends, which again, that's crazy. That's that I'm having the direct experience of this revenue generating um, software working in my favor. Nice. We're, we're doing this in a Facebook group. So we're doing it all together. And that way everyone will learn income activator together as well as um, they'll learn how, many other things that I know marketing like I'm just I just had a conversation with Kim Peterson who was one of our summit speakers this morning about YouTube uploading YouTube videos the SEO related to YouTube videos Facebook videos and posting videos and so now I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up on the we empower you Facebook group so that folks can learn about doing you know using YouTube videos to grow their business so it's going to be everything, marketing, advertising, uh, social media, all kinds of things that you can learn about growing your business. And we'll have experts like Rebecca talk about what she knows too. I mean, if there's expertise in the group, why not have those experts share what they know? <laughs> and our next meeting is Thursday, this Thursday at 4 p.m. and it'll be on Zoom again. Do you guys want to share why you ended up joining and what you hope to get out of the membership? I will. Okay, T. I'm really excited um, for a lot of reasons because you know how easy it is when we get involved with the internet, whether we're on social media or whatever, trying to promote a business, we can be scattered into so many different areas that it's hard to remember, you know, it's like you're always trying to catch up. You know, what did I say here? What did I do here? Um, and that doesn't necessarily get to the people that we're trying to direct our attention to. By merging everything under We Empower You and uh, Income Activator, all of a sudden you have this amazing one place where you can put it all together and have the time to learn about this, that, and the other thing when it comes to websites. And this is already created for you. You just basically, what I understand is that um, Lee is creating a template for Income Activator plus the website, and we just go in and fill in the blanks to make it ours. Which, you know, when you think about it, you know, time is money. And if you don't want to spend your time learning a new skill, because one's already got that skill and they've been doing it for 20 years, mm -hmm. It make more sense to invest a little money to you know have that knowledge that's always there for you plus the teachers you know I'm, I've learned so much and just watching the zoom last Thursday and listening to Lee and Bettina and we have a whole you know I am super excited to be part of this I really really am because I'm meeting amazing women you know, <laughs> and focus on the things that are important to me like my book and photography and you know I, I'm still trying to brand myself but to know that this is ahead for us you know I'm excited and I can't wait to get the you know I, I mean I, I was a little tardy to the party when it came to paying the bill I had to wait for the money so some people are already ahead of me and I cannot wait okay because the money's on the way and you know things are all going together and it's just like finally all the pieces are coming together and why would we not lock arms with fellow women who are empowering the world? You know, we need to be spoken. You know, yeah. we need to be heard. Yeah. We need to open our mouths and let the world know that we're here and what we stand for. Yeah. And the flow is, is uh, it kind of opens up as soon as you open up, right? So it's also really great. Thank you to you. You bet. Thank you. Uh, Miko had to head out. She has a 2.30 appointment. Lauren um, also might have a few things to say and well I'm I'm super curious um, so I'm I'm still dipping my toe in the water I'm looking at this as a very um, it's like I, I will I will already make my money back just by being part of the weekly accountability group and <laughs> the um, the marketing strategies and tips so from that standpoint alone you know I'm in um, you know candidly I don't understand fully how it works yet. Um, I get some of the core concepts, but um, mm -hmm. 
my, you know, my reputation is my, I think it's my most important um, business asset. And so um, I only choose to refer and recommend other businesses and other practitioners that I sincerely, you know, um, have a, a, a a good relationship with and would feel good about, you know, sending to my clients. So I want to learn more about how all this is going to work, but it, it sure seems like an amazing platform. So, yeah. um, and I'm hoping that I can nail Lee down today because yeah. <laughs> I've got some technical questions, but yeah, we'll see how that works. I'll ask you this, uh... Yeah, totally worth it just for the accountability. Um, because as, as Tia mentioned, you know, as a business owner, especially on the back end with the marketing, and we can get pulled in so many different directions. It's taken me years just to finally get my social media where I'm, I'm consistently posting and I've got, you know, certain things and I've, I've gone over, you know, I know how to do a lot of this web stuff. I've built many websites for myself and for other platforms. Um, so it's not, you know, so that, uh, is it something that I necessarily need leave for? However, what Lee has built in the back end, which we're, you know, she's trickling the information so it's not overwhelming, right? So we got like beginner last week, here's some of the, the foundational things to start thinking about, but she's built this kind of affiliate networking program on the back end that uh, is gonna be all set up for us to plug into. And so that's what I'm curious about because uh, it takes a lot. It takes yeah. a lot to, to drive traffic. Yeah, go ahead. Can I add a little? The one thing that piqued my interest more than anything is the way that we can help other people, just like um, Lauren was saying, the affiliate part with Income Activator, we can, we can encourage and support people that we know that are already in the industry, in different industries. This gives them a platform too, because we're able to give them leads. We're able to direct traffic to the people that we know are a valuable resource in our community. You know, and I, I've been around a while. I know a lot of people and I know in my mind that, you know, as soon as I learn a little bit more about how to get them going, they're already interested, you know, and it's a way that we can help one another, you know, build our communities because of this income activator and I, and the directory. So thank you. I think that, um, the comment was made that you made um, to you about the wonderful women that you're meeting and the powerful men too that we have in this group. And um, I would add, and uh, Lauren's been around for many, 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 many years now, going on I think 11 or so years, right? Since 2009 or eight. And um, that's one thing that seems to be like my number one strength is connector. And so I tend to, have these really amazing women in my life and i love the fact that i can all have them in one directory now and you know not just in my hot little head you know not just in my facebook not just in my twitter account but literally all in one place and so that really excites me uh, to no end <laughs> because like i said i've been on this journey since the 90s i've been looking for lee's platform since the 90s i had the the calling to unite and bring women together since the 90s late 90s and this is a long time in coming i have written this down over and over and over and over again i wanted a platform to do x y or z and here it is and she's had it for years i just took a while to get like i there was something just like this conversation around women and money and the lending there was something I was like twisting myself in different directions going like, how can this work? And how will this, you know? And then once I turned it on, it, it literally was like magic. That's how good it works. And now I kind of know I could kick myself because I could have done it two and a half years ago. <laughs> so any other thoughts? Questions. I know Ronnie's probably got more questions than answers, but uh, Lori Whaley's here too. She's got some questions, I'm sure, still. But what's the URL? Um, you can join um, by going to women's empowerment marketplace.com and then just click on the register button for the summit. 
and the details are listed in that register button. I need to spend a few to uh, moments here this week getting a more direct path to it, but that's where it is in the moment. Thank you. Have you ever heard that expression? I think it's a quote that says, when the student ready, is ready, the teacher will appear. Yes, in fact, I, I've recently used, been using that because it's like all these teachers are popping up all over the place, you know? Um, crazy. Uh, Dr. Cherie Carter-Scott and Michael, I signed up to their um, MMS Institute. I've known about their MMS Institute for years, but I th thought I knew what I, thought I knew about it. And then as I unearthed more recently, I'm like, oh my God, I should have done this years ago. I'm 62. I'm their oldest student right now in this course. And they have a teenager on the other end. And I'm like, I could have done this 15 years ago, 16, 17, however many years it's been, I could have done it along the way. But it must be the right time, right? It is. The teachers are back in my life again, and the student is finally ready. Thank you everyone for coming today and sharing your thoughts and wisdom. I hope this has inspired you to uh, jo join us. Oh, and here's Lee. What perfect timing. We were just about to sign off. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, um, maybe you can, not knowing our conversation, we were just sharing with Ronnie a little bit about the income activator and she's interested. Um, obviously the rest of the folks here are already members. Um, and Lauren and I uh, wanted to get on a call with you later on. So um, any final thoughts about Income Activator and what that might do for somebody like Ronnie who already has a directory going? Well, Ronnie, uh, the Income Activator directory was bought by one of the leading, mar mar oh, the leading uh, marketing companies in Toronto, Torstar, for just over $2 million. So it's really effective and it's how I've been making money since 94. And basically you just uh, sign up companies, you give them, you guys decide how much a lead is worth and then you create their page and a referral form. It tracks the lead and automatically creates the invoice. It's, it's really slick. I used to send $5 leads to insurance companies and I would average about $50,000 a month. My highest month was uh, 113,000. And it's just really focused. And what Tina and I are doing is really talking about the simplicity of um, deciding what people are searching for online, addressing that search inquiry, controlling your, your traffic and telling your traffic where to go. And the money is in the recommendations. So we're, we're into our, like our third week, right, Sabina? Uh, Sabina. Uh, Bettina? Yes. I've been going crazy. Um, and it's, it's, really, it's really slick. It's really simple. But it, it's not, it, you guys haven't been taught this. Um, and you haven't been taught it for a reason because people are making too much money from you. And you, it's, it's way more, it's way better for them to confuse you and keep charging you than just to tell you, exactly what the multi-billion dollar companies are doing. Like if I start off with a blank website and I would say, I'm now a photographer. I don't take any pictures. I just say, give me your pictures. I say, nice spa. Do you want me to send you back a lead? And they say, yes. And that's Pinterest, 30, 30 mil, $300 million last year. You get people to contribute content and you send them back leads. That's it. That's Airbnb. That's uh, Uber. That's Facebook. That's um, you, uh, YouTube. Tubu. It's everybody except for you guys. So what I'm saying to people is keep your business going exactly what you're doing. Do exactly what you're doing. Don't change a thing, but start um, listening to what I'm saying. Grab a website start doing what I'm saying, and then you'll start seeing the flow. And once you make some money, it's just rinse, wash, and repeat. But it, <laughs> it's taking a lot of, um, uh, sorry to make you laugh. <laughs> it's taking, it's, it just takes a lot of um, retraining because they spent billions of dollars brainwashing you that, and to somehow it's, it's in your interest to give 
them your content so that they can make money from leads instead of you. The other way around. So uh, Ronnie, you're going to be in the perfect position because you already have um, a directory and um, you might be crying <laughs> when you figure out how this, how this um, income activator works and applied to what already you have, you know, it's, yeah. it's completely. So, so Lee, can I set up a meeting with you and, and show you what I'm doing and you show me what you're doing and we chat? No, we were just teasing you. We just made it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. Uh, get my email from Bettina, and then we'll just go from there, okay? Yeah. Great. Then, uh, Actually, Lauren you know what? Just call me. 949-545-4211. All right. And, and Lauren, when, when are we talking? Right now? Your mute, your mute is on, but I hear you. Right yeah, now. I'm ready now and I'm available the rest of the day. So this Okay, is so just after this call would be perfect. Perfect. Yeah, be fine. Just okay. uh, freeway us, uh, Lauren. Well, then... actually, you know what we should do, Bettina? We should get this email out and then we should call Lauren. Okay. We need to get an email out to everybody with the links and yeah. a page. And have, right? Yeah, and if we could do uh, Zoom so we could do screen share, that would be great. Yeah, sure. and please share the earlier part of this uh, message with... Um, folks, because seriously, we've got to get the women in our lives, especially notified and informed that they too can be the beneficiaries of these great opportunities that are being afforded and uh, business owners across America, you know, let's help get America's businesses moving and uh, be the recipients of some of these great grants and funds and loans. So Bettina, you're going to send out a recording for everybody to, for us to share? Yeah, I'll send this entire recording out uh, as soon as uh, it, it downloads. I'll put Can it I just say thank you to Bettina for really Aww. being such a champion? I mean, just champion us, nudging. Come on, check this out. <laughs> Try it, see if it works for you. Because I, I would have let it slide and wouldn't have done it if she yeah. hadn't been continually. And Lauren and I know a number of women. Of the 20 or so women that I talked with, you know, over a dozen or so have already been funded and the others are in the popper. And then I have a few stragglers that are kind of still hemming and hawing. And thank you for the trust. Seriously, the trust that you have to have in me to do what I'm advising because it, it's a two-way street. I mean, yes, I can be informed and I can inform you, but at the end of the day, you have to have equal trust in me that I am giving you the right advice. And so I really appreciate that comment and I appreciate all of you for being in my life. You know, here's to forever more and uh, for being together in spirit, locking arms and moving forward together. <laughs> uh, Bettina, uh, let's do Lauren at four o'clock, okay? Okay. And I just got you another person, Allie. She's one of, uh, she is an income activator, website platform person, but she wants to join the group and listen in and then, you know, go from there. Okay. That sounds okay. good. Perfect. All right, everyone. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>